Welcome back to another edition of Loop TV. I'm Mark Adamo, and in this video, we're going to be looking at creating screaming lead sequence sounds with massive. So let's have a look at this sound here. Okay, there you see it's a self playing sequence here using this performance sequence here as the main modulation thing for the scream filter cutoff here. So if we take this off, there you go. That's what we've got. And uh, let's start by looking at the oscillators. And in number one, we have a rough math number two. It's pitched one octave down here, minus 12 semitones. The wavetable position is about 30%, and the intensity is at zero. And if you look here, we've got the formant one selected. So, in case we wanted to do that kind of stuff, and we're routing it to filter one, which is currently off. If we've got the rest of the routing. After the filter here, we go through to insert two, which is parabolic shaper. Let's turn that off for the moment. That's what we got, and then we go into the effects, effects one, chorus, effects two, dimensional expander, and number three, EQ. So now we're running it pretty dry. The only other thing we've got on oscillator one, interacting with it, is the modulation oscillator here. So let's turn that off. And that's pretty much the start with rough math. Okay, so turn the modulation oscillator on and pitch it down to minus 12 and increase the phase here to roughly 60%. So there you go, and you can select that there like so. So that's reading it to oscillator one. Right, backing that up, we have oscillator two which is AI. Wavetable position here is just past the 60%. Intensity full on the spectrum format and amps on there. Route to filter one. So let's hear them together. So it kind of adds some extra mid-range tone in there. Right, now Let's have a look then. Filter one, scream filter. And you see the scream's got the cutoff, the scream position, and the resonance here. I'm going to turn that all the way off. And what I like to do is I kind of uh, tune in the scream to like the root note of the track. So I get some kind of good harmonic overtone as standard. And it's a matter of kind of setting the scream and the resonance and the cutoff and molding them all together to get the right harmonics because they all interact and they throw the tuning of each other off a little bit. So it's not quite linear. The performance modulator. I've set it to ratio to a quarter note and set it to restart and sync to the beat and at full amplitude there. Now, at quarter note, what this means is I can have longer sequences and smaller subdivisions here, like here where we use the doubler. And we need to turn up. And if we invert the modulation backwards, we'll get the sliding up sound. And so we've got the combination of different curves here. We've got this. Uh, logarithmic style curve, we got a linear curve, we got a double, little sawtooth thing there, and a flat one, which is that there. Okay, so let's shut that curve down a minute and back to the uh, routing. 
and switch on insert to this one here. As you can see, that just overdrives it like crazy. Now if we go to chorus and turn that on. The offset round about the middle there gives it a nice kind of wide thing without too much flanging and the depth, you don't want it so much. So there and the dry wet and the rate in the middle there, a medium kind of setting. Okay, now let's move on, dimensional expander. I like to use just a little bit on these sounds to give it a little wetness and mix the wet dry there at about 15-20%. So switching the EQ on, you can hear it just gives it a nice extra bit of brightness. Not really doing anything with the low and mids, and I'll probably use a second EQ to cut it when I do add sub bass to this sound later on. Okay, so let's have a look at the performance also and how it interacts with restarting. So as you can see, because it restarts every time you hit the key, we can use this as if we, when we're playing the envelope. And when we hold the note down longer, it moves to the second, third, and fourth stage of the thing, of the uh, sequencer, giving us the double notes and the flat thing, thus providing all the different expression we want to make this screaming lead sound talk to us. <laughs> So you could also choose something like this one here instead. Or we could even uh, double everything up, make it even longer, repeat certain aspects and then change the endings second time round. Okay, let's move that and bring that all the way there to eight. So now it's gonna loop all the way across to that point. There you go. And back with the beat. 